you've taken your Harmony Director out of the box, you've got it plugged in, you've attached it to your speaker system, and you're ready to turn it on and see what happens. So we use the power button here. We watch as the screen lights up. And so immediately we see in the screen several things that are telling us specific information about how the keyboard is set up at this point. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see which instrument we're set to. And you can change this easy by just hitting the voice button and then using the wheel to adjust to the instrument that you would like to use. In this case, we're going to keep it set to brass. Also in this window, it tells you what we're set to as far as hertz. So we're set at 440 hertz. If you like it a little bit higher, a little bit lower, obviously you can adjust that. The most important thing you see at this point is where we are set as far as the temperament. So we're in equal C major. We'll also notice that in this point the transposition is set to C as well, so there is no transposition at this time. Towards the left-hand side, a very important button down here, or slider down here, is the octave slider. So this is showing you, because obviously the keyboard is not a full set of key, keys, you can adjust what part of the, of the octave that we're set at. So from the low, then changing it to low 2, which just brings it up, to mid, to high. I found in most situations, low 2 is the most acceptable in terms of creating resonant drones in the low to medium range. Okay? You'll also notice a hold button. So at this point, um, we can use the hold button to hold down a drone as we're, as we're doing an exercise. So if you're spending three to four minutes on F concerts trying to get them to blend and balance and be in tune, you can just press the hold button, play two octaves of drone, leave it, and then start the rehearsal on your own. So you can, can have the drone happening the entire time without having to have your hands on. Again, just to stop the drone, we'll just press the hold button again. Okay. Now, the, one of the most powerful aspects of the Harmony Director is the temperament. So you can see up in the, up in the corner here, right next to the screen, we're currently set for equal. Also next to it is pure. So this is where you get into the true power of, of the keyboard itself. Most of the time, you will want to be set in pure temperament, and mainly because you're using this as a harmonic tool. So at this point, you notice that it's showing us in pure C major. All you need to do to change the temperament and the tonic of the temperament is play the major chord of the key you're in, or the minor chord of the key you're in. So if you're working on a concert band piece on this particular day that's set in the key of E flat, all you need to do is press an E flat major triad, and the entire keyboard has shifted itself away from one tonal center into another. If you play the scale now at this point in the key of E flat, you can hear that every part of the scale, every scale degree, is being adjusted based on pure temperament. So if we go back to equal, you'll hear a difference between the two. And go back to pure. Same thing with minor. If I play an F minor triad, now the entire keyboard is set to the key of F minor. So again, if you listen to the scale, versus equal temperament, slight difference, but important differences, especially when you're trying to depict to, to, pick to students how the, how the difference between the two temperaments, equal and pure, affect chord structure. So as we get started, if you're playing something that's basically chromatic, equal temperament works best. If you're playing something that is based in triads, pure temperament works best. In this segment, we're going to look at some of the other aspects of the keyboard that can be very helpful in a rehearsal situation. One that I find particularly helpful are the transpose buttons here on the left side. So you can see we have C, B flat, E flat, and F, obviously connecting to the instruments that play in those keys. So if you're in a situation where you are, are doing a sectional with the trumpets, you can very simply press B flat, and now everything, the entire keyboard, has been shifted down to transpose along with the trumpet, including the triad itself. So if I play an F major triad, it's showing it as E flat, reminding you that we're in the key of E flat, but we're transposing for the trumpet. So F minor, although I played a G minor triad. In the same way, as you're playing off of the score now, if you're, just, if you're a slow transposer, you can just play literally what the trumpets have, and it will be transposing it into concert pitch.
So even though I've played in the key of G minor, it's been transposed to the key of F minor. So that could be very, very helpful. But always remember as you move back to full ensemble to hit it back to C, because that can be a problem. Um, the other thing that this is allowing you to do as well, as we look at equal and pure, is you can actually set individual pitches as well. So if we go to the individual pitch button, the first screen you see with all those zeros is the volume of each individual note. So we're in C major, all of the notes currently are being played at the same volume. If you're playing a C major triad though and you want to show the concept of how the third should be slightly softer than the other notes. You can use the cursor to come across to the, where the E is, and then by using the wheel, just bring the volume down. So now as we listen to the triad, the E has been brought down out of the mix. I'll bring that back to zero. If I press that again, now you're seeing the temperament. So at this point, since we're in user C major, every, every note is being played at equal temperament. You can change that by simply moving over, and we're going to change the fifth to plus two. So this makes a perfect, perfect fifth with the slight adjustment of the, of the, of the fifth. And then the other thing we want to change here to make the, the major triad sound correct is adjusting the third. So in general, the, the third is going to be adjusted down 13.7 cents in a major triad to make it sound correct. An interesting exercise you can do with students is to, we'll move the cursor over to the E, have them close their eyes and listen to the triad. And so as I play it now, it's going to sound very much uh, at, not, at, not at rest. You can hear even through the video lots of beats. And then by taking the wheel, gradually it adjusts it down. And as they're closing their eyes, they raise their hand when they hear it come to rest. So as we move it down, we get to 13.7. We now have the chord perfectly tuned for how we want it to sound, allowing them to not necessarily look at something that tells them what the pitch is by having to use their ear to guide them. They actually create much better uh, listening skills. In this video, we're going to be discussing the sound back button, the recording button, and the training areas of the HD 300. Let's jump into the sound back button first. This is an incredibly exciting development when it comes to individual corrections made in rehearsal. So let's begin with a real world scenario. Let's say that you're going down the line in the trombone section and there are parts split between first, second, and third trombone. The third trombones are playing a B flat, the second trombones are playing a D natural, and the first are playing an F. When you think through that, you know that you want the B flat to be perfectly in tune, the D to be lowered a bit, and the concert F to be raised just a bit. We have our guest trombonist here, Wyatt, and he's gonna show you a little bit about how this works. We're gonna start by reaching over and pressing the sound back button. Once we press the sound back button, we can go ahead and set it into pure temperament, and we'll set it automatically into concert B flat. Now that we're set to go, it's going to go ahead and play it back as we go. So, Wyatt, we're going to begin with your B-flat. Next, we're going to move to your D. And then we'll hear you play Concert F. And you can hear Wyatt making all those small adjustments inside of that. The good news is that this works inside of Pure Temperament without you having to use the keyboard and be over here manning the keys all the time. So much of what you can now do is watch the performer. You can see them in the space. You can look at their embouchure, their hand position, their breathing, and assess how they're playing in tune, what makes it in tune, or what makes it out of tune, and how we can adjust from there. So it's our hope that this is an, a tool that really helps you move forward with how you use the Harmony Director in rehearsal, no longer having to press every single key, but simply clicking sound back, being in the right key, and letting the performer give you the feedback that you need. Next, we're gonna talk about the recording function. This is a game changer. Many of us connect our Harmony Director into the PA system in the band hall. We use it to make sure the metronome is audible and that students can hear pitches and chords that we model through the Harmony Director. Now, on the HD 300, we have a built-in microphone, or you can use your own USB microphone. You can record the ensemble or any individual or a section and play it immediately back for the students. Before the HD 300, you maybe had a small digital recorder you would use to record the ensemble to listen back, 
often maybe on your own time for the purpose of making rehearsal notes. But now you can just click record and have the ensemble play, say, the opening of a march. And then you can immediately play it back for them in class for evaluation. As well, these recordings are saved onto any commercially available USB flash drive. So if you'd like to record the entire piece, you can do that and then go back through and listen to it as you get into your lesson planning. There's even a time shift feature that allows you to pre-record just a few seconds before you press the button. Perhaps you have a complicated count-in uh, with asymmetrical meter, and you want to make sure that you get that count-in just right and then go back and click the record button. Or perhaps you just want to record a few seconds of something. You can get a little bit of a lead-in as that solo starts, for instance, if you want to play that back for the student to give him or her some feedback. So let's dig into the recording feature for a second. I'm going to use the internal microphone for our purposes today so that you can hear the recording quality that you can get from the, the Harmony Director 300. Um, it's, it's a really good microphone. So Wes is our guest bassoonist today. He's going to play a short excerpt for us so that we can hear exactly what the microphone sounds like. We're going to turn over to the keyboard, and all we have to do is press the record button. <laughs> How about if we wanted to record Wes with the metronome? We could actually go through and do that and have him listen to himself play right with the metronome to figure out alignment-wise where he stands. So let's try that. We're going to turn over to the metronome feature, and we're going to set it to 120, which is his eighth note. And we're going to go ahead and start it and listen to him play with the metronome. <laughs> Lastly, what if we wanted to have Wes play with the metronome and the drone? Exactly what would that sound like? Well, we know that he's in A minor, so we can start the drone. And then from there, we can go ahead and start our metronome and have him play. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps in Friday in a rehearsal when you want to get a recording of the group, you can just click the record function and let it run throughout your rehearsal so that you can listen to it and hear how your students are doing as you do your lesson planning for the next week. Now, what about rhythm style and rhythm training? The new rhythm style button takes the HD 300 where the HD 200 hasn't quite been yet. We can choose from a variety of metronome styles that utilize real percussion sounds to help our ensembles. Some of the choices include 8-beat, 16-beat, swing, march, 6-8 march, waltz, samba, and bossa nova. A great quarter note triplet tool is included as well. And any and all of these can be used to help students grasp the style requirements of, for instance, a 6-8 march, especially if you're rehearsing perhaps just one of your wind sections. Maybe you're just working with your clarinets that day and your percussionists aren't in the room. Let's take a listen to a few of the rhythm style and training options available. As we go over here, we're gonna click the training button. And then as we dive in, we're going to choose rhythm style, and then we can listen to each one as we go. We'll start with the 8-beat. And then the 16-beat. The swing. And then the march. There's also a 6-8 march. I think this tool will probably be one of my go-tos with the ensemble in terms of aligning triplets. And finally, as I mentioned in my other video, you can record any pattern you want, either by creating a file in a music writing software and exporting the MIDI, or simply by playing the pattern on the keyboard using the side stick sounds and then recording it on the USB drive. This is important when we think about aligning multiple class periods maybe on an, a ritardando, um, on an accelerando to make sure that 
with the marching band, everybody has the same understanding of what that pace is like to have those tempo alterations already recorded in. Thank you again for joining me today as we talk about the HD300. There are a number of exciting developments on this new keyboard, and I hope that you'll consider making it a part of your daily rehearsals in your program. I think the metronome and rhythm training areas of the HD300 are great improvements that will help programs grow better individual musicians and better ensembles.